Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman and the folks from Acer let us borrow their big huge Chromebook 15 to check out. This is a rather large Chromebook and this is the top of the line version that they let us borrow. So uh, there is another one right below this one that'll probably be the sweet spot for uh, cost and performance. There is one really at the low end of the spectrum that uh, is very affordable, but it doesn't have as nice of a display and the processor isn't as fast. So I'm gonna really kind of steer you in towards the middle and the middle isn't all that expensive. So th this is the i5 version, four gigabytes of RAM, 32 gigabytes of storage, weighs about 4.8 pounds or so, has a 1920 by 1080 display IPS, but it's not glossy, so it's got a pretty nice matte display here, uh, very decent viewing angles on it too. I'm quite impressed with this, and uh, $499 as you see it. There's also one with a Celeron processor, the 3205U, that is the same chip that's in the Acer C740 uh, Chromebook that we looked at a few months ago. Uh, that's the one that I would recommend actually, because that one comes in uh, at $329, but has the same display. There's also a white version available too, so if you want uh, a white one, you can get a white one, or you can choose uh, this black one here. So a uh, nice display. I think this is the real sweet spot for this resolution, especially especially when you're sitting uh, at a laptop distance away from it. Uh, it goes down pretty far too. It doesn't go flat, but it does go uh, much farther than a lot of other laptops do. So that's a pretty nice uh, angle on that one there. Uh, it's got the standard Chrome keyboard. It does feel very nice and very high quality. I've seen a lot of Chrome keyboards now over the last uh, year and a half or so, and this one really feels nice, and it's certainly on par with Acer's other offerings. Uh, nice stereo speakers here. They're not gonna be as good as uh, maybe a pair of speakers that you might plug into the computer, but they do sound nice. Uh, a good stereo separation and quite loud too because you've got a lot of surface area here uh, to project that sound out on there. Uh, the trackpad is very spacious, although it, I wish it was a little less spongy, uh, but it is usable. It's certainly uh, on par with other uh, Chromebook uh, touchpads I have used, but you have to push it down a little bit too far to get things moving around. So I wasn't as impressed with the trackpad, but uh, it is responsive and works uh, as well as other Chromebook uh, trackpads do. On the side here, we've got a power cord port, of course, you need that, uh, HDMI, USB 3, as well as a headphone jack on that side. On the other side here, you have a memory card slot. You can uh, pop in a card, although it doesn't go flush to it. It kind of sticks out a little bit, but uh, good for dumping your photos off into the Google ecosystem. Remember, these are very much cloud-based computers. So uh, although it has 32 gigabytes of storage, it doesn't need all that much storage to operate because if you put photos on it, they just get uh, shot up to Google Photos into the cloud. You can store things locally on it, but uh, most people with these tend not to. Uh, you also have a USB 2.0 port here and a Kensington lock for locking it down uh, on a table. So that is the overall hardware. And now let's take a look and see how this high-end one performs. All right, let's check out its web browsing prowess because that is what you do on a Chromebook. And we'll take a look at my YouTube channel here and click into a video and you'll see how fast everything spins to life here. So a uh, very fast rendering time, as you can see, things are really spinning to life very, very quickly. Uh, we can even go in and look at a 1080p 60 video. This is running at 60 frames per second. Uh, very responsive here as well. So we're not, we're not having the same kinds of issues with uh, the 60 frames per second video that we had uh, with some of the lower end Chromebooks, which tend to struggle a little bit with that. So uh, full screen is no problem. 60 frames per second works just fine. So a lot of the higher end video should do well. And this is no surprise because don't forget, we're running with an i5 processor on an operating system, Chrome OS, that is designed for lower end processors. So uh, faster chips will do uh, very, very well on here, as you can see. Uh, we can even pull up the Hello Racer WebGL demo here. This is a uh, little demo of the uh, 3D graphics capabilities of our uh, Chromebook here. And you can see the graphics are very fast and fluid and uh, very detailed also. This is using the Intel graphics that are uh, built into the uh, i5 chipset here. So really good performance there. On the Octane test, we get a score of 26,594. Uh, that measures its ability to render HTML and JavaScript, the things that our, uh, the web is made from. So we can see how it compares to many other computers on the market. Uh, many of the machines above this one in performance also cost twice or three or four times as much. So it just gives you an idea uh, of where this is for $499 uh, with the i5 processor. It really does uh, perform quite well. Now, if $500 is too much for you, there are some other options available from Acer uh, in this very same form factor. The problem is there's like 14 different options to choose from, which can get uh, pretty confusing. So what you're gonna see at the low end is a $198 version. It'll look very similar to this one, if not exactly the same. However, it doesn't have the same guts this one does, and it won't be nearly as fast. And I'm actually gonna recommend against that low end one, uh, not only because its Celeron processor is uh, rather slow compared to what 
you see on this one, uh, but also because its display, although it is 15 inches, is at a much lower resolution. It's not going to look nearly as good uh, as the 1080 display is going to look like. So you definitely want to look for the 1920 by 1080 IPS display as you are browsing through uh, the multitude of different variations of this product. Now the other thing I'm going to suggest though is to look for the faster Celeron processor. So although the $198 version has a Celeron processor, that one is a very slow Celeron. There's actually a speedy Celeron uh, right in the middle called the 3205U. So that's on a number of these different variations. Uh, and the one that I think is the sweet spot uh, is this one at $279. And this one has uh, that Celeron 3205U, it's a dual core chip, it has that full HD 1920 by 1080 display, and it has four gigabytes of RAM like this one does. So you can have a lot of tabs open and have a lot of things running at the same time. It won't be as fast as what you just saw here, but uh, it is going to be uh, more than adequate for a Chromebook. And I don't think a lot of people are going to tell the difference, especially if they're doing uh, just a lot of basic web browsing. I think the YouTube video stuff will be fine. A lot of what you would normally do on a Chromebook is going to be uh, speedy and quick and responsive. And you can check out my review of the uh, Acer C740, which is an 11 inch Chromebook, but it has the same or similar processor uh, as what I'm recommending here. So you can get into a really nice Chromebook uh, for 279, four gigs of RAM. It does have less storage space, which is uh, 16 on that one versus 32, uh, what you saw on here. But on Chrome OS, it doesn't really matter because so much of what you do gets pushed up to Google's cloud anyhow. Uh, if you're not storing a lot locally on the computer, I really wouldn't worry about uh, going with that 16 gigabyte SSD on the less expensive model. So 279.99 is the sweet spot if you're looking to save some bucks. Uh, but if you want to go for the gusto and have some horsepower, uh, $499 is also a good value and it's a, a very nice Chromebook. One last thing, which I didn't mention, is battery life. Uh, depending on what you do with it, you're going to see probably anywhere from six to eight hours, maybe nine or 10 hours if you uh, turn down the brightness on the display. But I think for what most people will use it for, I expect to get six to eight out of it uh, through the course of just doing uh, you know, normal low key kind of usage, which is a lot of what you would normally do with a Chromebook anyhow. This is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the generosity of my Patreon supporters. If you find the channel helpful, you too can contribute for as little as a dollar a month. Visit lon.tv slash Patreon to learn more.